Well, good morning, everyone, and a very happy new year. It's really lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Martine Oborn. I'm the vicar at St Michael's Chiswick, and um, I do hope and pray that 2021 brings many, many blessings. Uh, there's a verse in uh, the book of 1 John in the Bible that I've really been, has really been speaking to me this week, and it says, the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Hey, what a wonderful verse to take into the new year with us. The darkness is or is passing away. We are through the worst of things. The true light is already shining. We have hope. Um, we know the vaccine uh, is coming and... Um, there is hope for a much brighter 2021, but most of all, there is hope because the true light, that is Jesus, the light of the world, is with us. Jesus is born, he is alive and with us today, and because we have the choice to walk in that light, then whatever joys, whatever challenges uh, may present themselves over the next 12 months, uh, we will have the peace and comfort and confidence and hope that comes from living every day in the light of Christ. How wonderful is that? So today we're celebrating Epiphany, the wonderful story of the coming of the wise men to see Jesus. And uh, we're going to start in a moment with the choir singing a wonderful hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old. But before we do that, let's pray. Lord, it's a new year, it's a new start. Um, but in many ways, uh, all the challenges that we had last year continue. We're still grappling with this pandemic and we still have many problems in our world. But the exciting thing is that we know that you are with us. You are God with us, Emmanuel. And Lord, that we can trust and hope that there will be light in our darkness. There is light in our darkness through the person of Jesus and through his presence with us now and always. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, And they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, thank you, Ned. So I want to start by telling you a little story. Um, This is many years ago when uh, my husband Peter, who's a journalist, um, he and I took our children on a holiday uh, to the island of Iona. And uh, Peter actually had been asked to write a little report on um, a hotel, a new hotel there. And so uh, we stayed there incognito. They didn't know that he was writing this report. And um, it was a bit of a disastrous time, really. Our our sons were, I don't know, about eight and eight or nine. Um, And and they made a lot of noise. And as you know, Iona is a wonderful place for a spiritual retreat. And um, we were constantly getting into trouble in the hotel for one thing or another. And I just think that if they had known that Peter was writing this big review for the Telegraph for them, uh, would they have behaved any differently towards us? Um, It's an interesting question. Um, I think probably they would, because at one point they actually threatened to to throw us out. Um, Sometimes you just don't know who a person is. Sometimes you just don't know who a person is. And I tell this story and say that because today we're looking at Matthew's Gospel and Matthew really wants us to know and understand who Jesus is. That is the point of his whole book, is to show us very clearly who Jesus is and so that we can see that Jesus has the power to change everything, to change us and to change the whole world. Um, And one of the things that he most wants us to know is that Jesus is Emmanuel. He is God with us, God among us. And that message is not just for a small group, but for absolutely everyone, for all nations. And if you look at the book of Matthew, you see this very clearly, because at the beginning of his book, he he puts this wonderful story, this this birth story of the coming of the wise men, the coming of the Magi. They're not Jewish um, men. They've come from perhaps Persia, we're not absolutely sure, uh, but from other nations, from places east and far east of uh, Jerusalem. And they come to see Jesus. 
And he ends his gospel, if you remember, I wonder if you do remember how Matthew's gospel ends. Um, it ends with the Great Commission. Do you remember that? Where Jesus uh, commissions his disciples to go out and make disciples of whom? A small group? No, of all nations. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the book begins with that and uh, ends with that. This message of who Jesus is, is for everyone. But then, in mostly in uh, Matthew's uh, book, he is speaking to the Jewish people who he writes for, that writes his story for. And so he also um, makes great efforts to show that Jesus fulfills um, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, and he is the Messiah that everyone has been waiting for. So again, his story um, in the birth narrative is full of references to uh, the Hebrew Bible and full of symbolism. So we just kind of look uh, briefly at those because I find this really fascinating. Uh, first of all, Jesus has to be born in Bethlehem. If he's a Messiah, people were expecting Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. And there's a, a prophecy that he, from the prophet Micah, that uh, Matthew actually quotes in uh, verse 6 of this second chapter, um, saying how Jesus, uh, the Messiah, is going to be born in Bethlehem. He's going to, Bethlehem was David's city. The great King David was from Bethlehem. And uh, Matthew gives the whole genealogy of Jesus, um, showing that he comes from David's line. He's born in David's city. So this is tying up people's expectations that this is where the Messiah comes from. And similarly with the star. The star appears and this fulfills another prophecy, a prophecy that we see in the book of Numbers. Um, those of us who are part of our um, Tuesday morning, um, is it Wednesday morning? I can't remember. We, one of our Bible reading groups, we've read this passage recently about um, a prophet called Balaam who is asked uh, by, a, by a Syrian king to curse Israel. He absolutely refuses to do this and more than that because he hears the God uh, that God is saying um, Israel will be blessed it will be and will be a blessing to all nations and in this in numbers it talks about a star coming out of Jacob coming out of the people of Israel um, so this symbol symbolizes the fulfillment of this prophecy and then of course there are the gifts that the wise men bring, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And here we're supposed to think of um, gold being a gift for a king because Jesus, the Messiah, was to be a king. Actually, he turns out to be a very different kind of king to the one that maybe people expected, that he still is a kingdom king and, and comes to bring in a kingdom. He wears a crown. It's not a golden crown but a crown of thorns. He comes to bring in a kingdom that is an upside down kingdom to any, compared to anything anyone has ever seen before. So the gold symbolizes Jesus as king. The frankincense uh, symbolizes Jesus as the great high priest. Frankincense was used um, for worship in the temple and um, it shows how Jesus is the one who will bring us back uh, into relationship with God as the eternal priest. And finally, myrrh. Myrrh is for someone, uh, is, is to be used on a body um, after death, to anoint a body. And uh, so this points to how Jesus will die for us. Jesus will give his life, will be our saviour, uh, saving us from sin and death. So all this is encapsulated in this marvellous story. 
um, and would have meant and signified so much to the people who uh, Matthew was speaking to in his time. Uh, but what about us today? What does it say to us today? Why is it important to us? Well, it's extremely important that we also know who Jesus is, that Jesus is our King and Jesus is our Saviour. I lived a lot of my life not knowing that, um, living in a different kingdom, in a worldly kingdom where um, status, money, all these things were uh, the way I saw the world. But when uh, I allowed Jesus into my life, uh, I entered this wonderful upside down world where the things that most people in the world think are not important, and the people that most people think are not important become the, mo the most important in, in seeing things through God's eyes, where the first is last and the last is first. How exciting is that? And also, I came to see how Jesus had saved me, saved my life. And what I mean by that is how he brought me healing and wholeness and how I no longer have to live my life with any guilt or any fear. I know that my sins are forgiven and I know that I have new life and eternal life in Jesus. So what a wonderful way to live, um, being free from guilt and free from fear. So how can we all experience this and enjoy this? How can we, how can we know Jesus for ourselves uh, as to who he truly is? Well, what I want to encourage you to do as you make your New Year resolutions is simply to spend more time with Jesus. Spend more time with Jesus. Um, coming to these services, reading your Bible, do that with us or with another group because it's so much easier to do it with other people and praying. As we spend more time with Jesus, we will come to know who he is. Um, if you spend a lot of time with someone, you get to know them and, that is, and to know who they are and uh, how you can trust in them uh, or not. But with Jesus, when we spend time with him, we will come to know who he is. And as we do that, we will also grow in his likeness. I want to encourage you to spend time with Jesus and to and to and to grow and and to intentionally grow in his likeness when you um, admire and respect someone if you want to be like someone you would try and do the things that they do and uh, let's do that this year with Jesus um, let one of the things that Jesus does is he lives life slow he's not in a hurry he has time for everything. He's often being interrupted. There's a lot going on in his life. But he lives his life at a slow pace, at a pace of what I would call is the pace of love. You can't be loving and peaceful and full of joy and hope if you are living your life in a hurry all the time. You don't see Jesus in a hurry. He's never too busy or too hurried to give people his attention and to give people his love. So let's get to know Jesus this year. Let's know who he truly is. Let's um, accept the healing and wholeness that he brings um, with our sins forgiven, with our fears taken away. And then... Uh, may we live our lives like him at the pace of love. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Um, we're going to continue in prayer now and Leslie will lead us in our prayers. Dear Father God, in these first uncertain, hopeful, trusting days of a new year. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for the beautiful world 
you have provided for us. Help us to nurture and protect its beauty, that those who dwell in it may live in harmony with nature and with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to reflect upon the year that's passed. A hard year, Lord, and yet we thank you for the many blessings that you gave us in it. We thank you for the necessary pause in which we came to understand that it is often those most humble who show the way to goodness. We lift to you the ones who cared for us throughout the year, the ones who tend the sick, who bring our food, who clean up after us. We also lift the ones whose presence cheers us and the ones whose absence underlines the precious gift of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gifts of wisdom, diligence, of kindness and of faith. The wisdom of the scientists who strive to find new ways to keep us well. The diligence of those who smile and do their duty, come what may. The faith of those who lead us in your church. And as the wise men did so many years ago, we offer all these gifts to you and to each other in the service of mankind. To our leaders, Lord, give wisdom, vision too. To all of us, give patience, courage, and the will to place the common good before our individual desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of learning and for those who teach. The ones who put themselves at risk and dedicate their lives to education and to the protection of our vulnerable and young. We honour them and what they do. Please give these teachers fortitude and patience too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The wise men travelled from far distant lands, and yet they came together in a common search for holiness and love. We thank you for the gift of open eyes and hearts and ask that this gift should be spread more widely still, that each of us may know the blessing and the richness of diversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gifts you give us even in our darkest hour, for in the gift of pain we learn compassion. To. We lift to you all who have asked for prayer. Diane Batten, Philip Evans, Christopher Golis, Vivian Golis, Evelyn Hanna, Pete Jadha, Anna Lee, Eloise Leibrand, Ulrika Llewellyn, Joan Martinez, Juan Manuel Mosuka Linares, Lisa and Ray Muller, Bisola Nakodu, Sue Riley, Betty Seaman, Martha and Ezra Prescott, and all the children of Hope School, Bulawayo. But also, Lord, we lift to you each one of us who now is anxious or afraid. 
despairing of the future, or who feels in this dark moment somehow parted from your love. We ask that each of these be cherished and protected and restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the shining star, the light that brings direction to the journey that we lead. And if today seems dark, remind us, Lord, that when we raise our eyes and look to you, your light will bring us home. Direct us so that we may see and reach the ones who falter on the journey that we make. That our hands may link with theirs and ease their path. Help us to remember, Lord, However separate and isolated we may sometimes feel, we do not walk alone, and that the steps we make are guided by your light and your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Well, thank you, Hansel and the band. That was a fabulous carol. I loved that. Thank you. Um, come to the end of our service now. Do join me for coffee and catch up afterwards. Um, I'd really love to see you. Really love to hear your news. Um, miss seeing you so much. So please do join uh, for the coffee and catch up uh, after the service. And uh, have a lovely week. I hope to see you in the week. And if not, next Sunday. We're actually starting a new sermon series next Sunday on some of the parables of Jesus and why and I want to really explore with you why he taught in this way and um, some of the really radical things that are in those parables so I'm hoping that we'll really enjoy doing that. Let's have our final blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for coming, and if you've enjoyed the service today, then please do share it with someone else. And uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please uh, visit and like our Facebook page, and sign up to our mailing list to make sure you know what's going on at St Michael's. Also, you can subscribe to my blog. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.